Hello everybody. So we will see how to start and stop the SAP system and what are the things to be keep in mind and what are the tasks need to be done before stopping the SAP system. Okay. So on a day-to-day -day basis, most of the time as a SAP basis administrator will be taken up with general system administration. So the system must be configured in a way that ensures stable operation with the available resource and avoid system downtime. So as uh, administrator, you are the person who also required to eliminate errors that can occur during operation, right? When you're starting, if your SAP is not starting up, then you need to eliminate, you need to figure out what is causing the error. So you have to investigate these errors. You have to determine the cause and you have to find an appropriate solution for that. In addition, there are critical situations will regularly occur that do not originate in the SAP system directly but are instead caused by a problem at the database or at OS level. So in that case, you are expected to quick, quickly and accurately access the system status and use the information obtained to make the right decision okay, concerning to the right departments. Now, we will see how we are going to start the SAP server and how we are going to stop the SAP server. So here already our SAP server is started. So we will stop the SAP system first. So there are some important points you need to remember before, a, before stopping the SAP system. Not only this, but the thing is that there are several other reasons why you may need to stop or restart the SAP system. It could be an unplanned hardware or software failure due to which you are starting, stopping the SAP system, okay? And there could be a plan activity which needs you to stop the SAP server, okay? If you are setting any parameters, in RG10 profile, you need to restart the SAP server, right? So these are some basic things which required for stopping the SAP server and starting the SAP server. Now, before you prepare to stop a SAP system, you need to coordinate with all the departments which are affected with. Okay? If a group of users has already scheduled in an activity for the period, period during which you want to shut down the system, right? And the activity is dependent on a live SAP system, you may have to postpone your system stop and give a high priority to the needs of the user. After that, you, 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 you have to create a message in a SAP system, you can create a message. How you are going to create the message? You will create the message using the transaction SM02. Okay? So before stopping the SAP system, you need to escalate to all the users. So SM02, once you enter into this transaction code, It will provide like the information here you need to create the message. Now system will be shut down by today at so and so time. Okay? Say 5 p.m. Due to 
some maintenance activity. Right. Then you have to provide the server name. Which server name you are going to stop? Right. So this is the server name. Client. You are giving a zero 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 from this client. Okay. And you will give the date and when you want to read this message. Okay. And once you enter the information, you need to save. So once you save, this message will appear on all the users who are working on the SAP servers. Okay. So this is one way of escalating to all the users. Okay. Whenever the user logs on, it will prompt with this message. Okay. And the second point before you stop the SAP system, make sure that no users are still logged on and active in the system. How do you want to know how many users are logging into the system? So see this message will appear for all to every user like this. Okay. So how you are going to see which of the users exist now? So there is a transaction. You can go with AL08 to check how many users are logged onto the machine. So as of now, it will show only one user reality since I have logged on. So in a company, you might get a lot of users. Okay. So all the users will be shown here, what transition code they are using, okay, everything, every detail, and which client they are working, okay, so you have to explain to those users. And the third important thing is that in SM37, okay, some jobs will be active or have been scheduled for the time during which the system stop is to take place. So you need to reschedule all the jobs or cancel the jobs that are due to either run or be started during a plan system stop. Okay. And the other important thing is that you need to check whether any active processes are still running or not. How are you going to check? You have to go to transaction SM50. Here you can see which active processes are running. Okay. So this will show you which active processor are running here. Okay. So likewise, these are the very, very important things you need to prepare before stopping the SAP system. Okay. So I will come out totally completely now. We stop the SAP system. This is the SID. I'm right clicking on that and I'm saying stop. So once I click on stop, it will prompt the want to stop all NSP instances. Means hard means immediately stop the system. Soft means it is uh, it will give some time to stop the system. So we need to stop immediately. Once you click on OK, to start, you know, stopping your systems. You can see this, there are no above purposes. The system has been stopped completely. So this is the way you have to stop the SAP system. Now, this you have seen how to stop the SAP system. Similarly, now you will going to see how to start the SAP system. The same way you will be going to SAP MMC console and you will make a right click on the instance SID NSP and you will click on start and say OK. So the system will start. OK. Now see here as I have explained like there are message and dispatcher which makes the SAP system to start. So once you click on start, it will first connect to the database. Okay. Then it will start the other above work processes. If you see there are other work processes. 
So understand until this no will become yes and new will become wait, you can't able to connect to SAP GUI. Okay. So you need to check that status should show yes and this status should show wait. If you refresh, because it may take some time to start an SAP instance, so patience is really an essential characteristic of a good system administrator. So you need to wait and remain calm. It takes if it takes longer than you know expected time. So you see, this status has been changed to yes, and start has become wait. Now you can connect to SAP through GUI. Got it? So this is how. We have seen how to stop the SAP system and how to start the SAP system. Thank you so much. Bye.